Hello, today I'm going to talk about Wilson's disease. Wilson's disease is an autosomal recessive disorder caused by a mutation in the ATP7B gene. ATP7B gene. This gene is responsible to produce a membrane protein that helps the transportation of copper. So, the main uh, problem here is the transportation of copper. Because the inheritance of this gene is recessive, it means that both of the parents, the father and the mother, need to be carriers of the mutated gene, so that their offspring presents with Wilson's disorder. But only 25% of the children will have both of the alleles mutated. As we said earlier, there is a problem with the transportation of copper. So, we will have a copper accumulation, copper accumulation or copper toxicity, copper toxicity. Therefore, the clinical signs are, are as a result of that accumulation. It primarily involves the liver and the brain, the liver and the brain. Because effective treatment is available, it is important to make the diagnosis early. If we zoom in a little and draw again the liver and the gallbladder, we can see a defect in the path of copper from the liver to the biliary tract, or defect in the copper excretion. As a result, there will be a copper accumulation and copper toxicity. If we continue to zoom in a molecular level, there, will, uh, there is a bond between copper and metallotionin. So, this black circle represents the metallotionin. The excess copper is connected to this protein and slows down the process of clinical manifestation. But as times go by, the liver damage begins as early as 3 years of age. In the bloodstream, there is a defective copper incorporation with apoteroloplasmin. Apoteroloplasmin here is represented as a blue star. So, this bond between copper and apoteroloplasmin does not exist. This leads to excess catabolism and therefore low levels of ceruloplasmin, which is a binding protein for the copper in the blood. So, we have low levels of ceruloplasmin. Also, as a result of low levels of ceruloplasmin, the, the serum copper levels are usually lower than normal serum copper. But as the disease progresses, non ceruloplasmin copper, also known as free copper, the levels increase, resulting in copper buildup in the parts of the body, such as the brain, and leading to neurological and psychiatric disease. Now let's move on to the clinical presentation. First, we are going to talk about the hepatic presentation. Wilson's disease might present as hepatitis, cirrhosis, or as liver decompensation. The symptoms usually start in the mid-teenage years. If it starts to present as hepatitis, there might be elevated levels of transaminase enzymes in the blood, with or without jaundice, and then spontaneously regress. But also it might, it might reoccur, and most of these patients with reoccurring hepatitis usually develop cirrhosis. Cirrhosis ends up in hepatic decompensation. Hepatic decompensation is associated with elevated bilirubin in the serum, reduced serum albumin and coagulation factors, ascites, peripheral edema, and hepatic encephalopathy. encephalopathy. Sometimes the number of red blood cells is decreased thus leading to anemia. Because of the hepatocellular necrosis, the copper is released from the cells of the liver into the bloodstreams. There occurs the hemolysis or the lysis of the red blood cells. So, whenever we have hemolysis and liver disease representing in a patient, we should think about Wilson's disease. Now, let's move on to the neurological manifestation of Wilson's disease. The symptoms usually occur in the patients in their early 20s. 
MRI and CT scans can reveal damage in the pons, medulla, thalamus, cerebellum, and subcortical areas. The three main deep movement disorders include dystonia, incoordination, and tremor. The clinical picture closely resembles that of the Parkinson's disease. Autonomic disturbances may include orthostatic hypotension, sweating abnormalities, sexual dysfunction. As a neurological symptom also might be memory loss, migraine and seizures. Patients with neurological problems may also have psychiatric symptoms. The psychiatric symptoms usually occur five years before the diagnosis of Wilson's disease. They can manifest as a behavioral disturbances. So the patient might have loss of emotional control, depression, hyperactivity, or loss of sexual inhibition. There are other symptoms outside of the brain and the liver in the Wilson's disease. One of the mostly known signs, which is very specific about the disease, is the Kaiser Fleischer ring. Kaiser Fleischer ring. It happens as a result of copper deposits in the outer rim of the cornea, here represented with a red color. Female patients have repeated abortions presented with amenorrhea. Also, there might be patients with, which present with nephrolithiasis or osteoarthritis. Now that we have seen the clinical manifestation of the Wilson's disease, let's move on to the diagnosis. Reach the diagnosis of Wilson's disease by applying four tests, which are serum ceruloplasmin. This test cannot be used for def definitive diagnosis because they are normal in up to 10% of the affected patients and are reduced in the 20% of the carriers. Another test is Kaiser Fleischer rings. The Kaiser Fleischer ring is presented in more than 99% of the patients with neurological and psychiatric symptoms, but it is presented in only 30 to 50% of the patients with hepatic symptoms. So, the absence of the ring does not exclude the diagnosis. Another useful tool is the 24-hour urine copper. Urine copper, is, urine copper is an important diagnostic tool, but must be collected carefully to avoid contamination. The most important tool to definitely diagnose Wilson's disease is liver biopsy. That is why this method is a gold standard for diagnosis. And at least the treatment. If diagnosed early, the anticopper drugs are effective. As anticopper drugs, the patient might take triantine, penicillamine, and zinc. Penicillamine usually is taken together with peridoxine. Zinc reduces the copper concentration by blocking intestinal absorption and also induces metallotyanin synthesis, which, as we said earlier, bonds the copper in the liver. 